Oh my gosh, I love this. Like, this is the best day of my life. Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Hope you, you are well wherever you are in the world. Today, we are doing another 4, 3, 2, 1 video. Four, three ingredient or generally more items because you get a lot more value for money and extra free flavor to try one time in your life. These recipes are budget friendly. They are designed to give you guys the basic platform to get inspiration. If you don't like a certain thing, omit it and swap it. Add a few more ingredients and it still stays fairly cost efficient. I love doing it. Uh, we've made some pretty cool recipes on the playlist so far so do check that out I nearly gave you finger guns then <laughs> first thing I'm gonna do is the dessert because it takes a little while it's a mango and passion fruit mousse it was gonna be mango but I managed to find a mango and passion fruit yogurt so free flavor it could be any flavor yogurt you want we've got a tin of condensed milk and of course we've got the mango which we're gonna shred up to puree it you can actually leave it in chunks you could chop it as well if you want but that's gonna really enhance that flavor in with those two other ingredients and we'll leave a bit to garnish so we're gonna whiz it all together. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Boom. That is it gonna be our mousse. The only downside is now we have to pour it into a vessel. So if you wanna have it and serve it at a later time, pour it into a big tub, but I'm gonna put it straight into one of my serving glasses. There we go, look at that. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. So we can stick these in the freezer. Do not put the other spare mango pieces on top because obviously they'll freeze and be rock hard when you want to eat it. Just keep them in the fridge and then we can work on our other courses. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I could show you, but like I could just take that. It wants to tip. It's in there. Can you see? They're just in there. Can I, if I open it a bit more? It like naturally just tips at an angle. All right, the main, although actually today's starter would easily replicate a main as well. I'll let you guys decide that. That is if it works. Remember, all of these recipes, it's just me doing them for the first time. So hopefully you guys get inspiration, want to add more to it and can make it look way better. I'll add notes when I type the recipes up, all right? But we have got some shredded, slow-cooked ham hock that you can buy in the supermarkets. On the uh, vegan aisle, they've got some bacon and stuff like that. Got the potatoes uh, and we're gonna do a few things with those just to add a bit of texture and finish it off as well. And the soup is gonna be what kind of brings it all together. This is a shredded chicken and vegetable soup so not only are we going to get the chicken and the vegetables it's in a stock so all that flavor is going to go into the potatoes the ham all work together and hopefully create a nice easy casserole I'm just going to get it into a square and then cut down into sort of one inch fat credit card rectangle shapes <laughs> credit card shapes little strips like that and then back along the way so like chips but then you suddenly like plot twist uh, turn it the other way to uh, Basically cube your potatoes. So uh, do that with uh, two potatoes, all right? So that's two potatoes in there. And remember, instead of using chicken and vegetable soup, if you use, say, leek and potato, they tend to have cubed potatoes already in it. So you've, if you want to stick to the rules like me, there's a couple of families that have started doing the 4321 like, nights. Like, it's a really, really cool, <laughs> like a date night thing, which is really, really cool. I guess I kind of do that on my own, but with, um, well, with this guy. Look at that. That isn't just a soup, is it? You can see the chunks of this broccoli and carrots in there. We're pushing the ham. Just trying to sort of fold it in so it's nice and randomised. And I don't know why I did that, because I've got to do it again with the potatoes, but hey-ho. A random fact for you, I actually only used one potato there. Uh, so I <laughs> cubed two potatoes. The kids are going to have some really weird chips tonight. And of course, I just could use my veggie prep kit for that. I've got the uh, square attachment to cube it. All right, that'll do. <laughs> the reason I've got a bit more ingredients is I was gonna use a larger baking dish, but because I'm using this one, it's only gonna be me and Mrs. B having it. It means I'm probably only gonna need, oh wow, yeah. <laughs> Put these very thinly strips, pieces of potato on there. Now I've learned that you guys let me have some slack with these videos. You could brush some oil on there. I'm not gonna do that. Because the last video I did where we uh, did that sort of breakfast bake thing, I didn't brush oil on those bits, but I will put a bit of pepper on there. Check that out. Huh? That's looking pretty darn awesome. Flavour packed. Underneath that lid of potatoes is some serious flavour. Right, let's get it in the oven. On the veggie prep kits, my Amazon listing, I think I mentioned this last year, it got hacked for about 12 months. So I didn't order any new ones until I knew it was resolved and they are now on the way. So I'll update you once they're in place. Uh, so yeah, this is um, meatloaf. 
doesn't look like it, but hopefully it'll be a, a, a passable meatloaf. And obviously meatloaf is more of an American thing. When I was younger, I actually thought uh, meatloaf was a loaf of meat, but in a weird way, that's kind of what it is. There are way more ingredients that normally go into it. There's a combination of meats and things, and you can put over glazes and things with ketchup and vinegars, but we're just gonna try and keep it as basic to do mini meatloafs. I mean, I could use more ingredients, but I would do anything for loaf, but I won't do that. So we've got some beef mince, uh, and this is some stuffing mix. So uh, sage and onion with breadcrumbs already in there, ready to go, and some milk to kind of moisten it up. The main flavor driver here is basically the stuffing mix. This is gonna be the meat, this is gonna give it a little bit of moisture so it's not dry and stodgy and hopefully work with the stuffing to give us those sage and onion flavors. So we're kind of missing out on some of the more meat loafy elements, but you can add those in and hopefully we'll make our mini loaves. But whilst I was doing that, the oven preheated. Oh. So this is going in. That needs a solid hour, and if I was making the meatloaf a standard size, uh, it would probably be about an hour too, but because they're mini pans that we've got, um, should probably be about 45 minutes. So we've got some low fat beef mince in there, and the stuffing mix straight in. And the milk, we'll just get it all in straight away together. What I'm hoping is that this stuffing, as we stir this round, will slowly absorb into that meat and randomize it, okay? So we're gonna give it loads of stirring and then we can press it into our pans and that will literally be it. But the reason I like this idea as well, when I was in the shop staring going, oh, what could I put with it? Like the breadcrumbs will kind of do, sometimes you make burgers with breadcrumbs, right? And it'll kind of hold it a little bit. But these of course aren't normal breadcrumbs. They are scattered with herbs and onions. And I genuinely think it's gonna be pretty good. I'm finding the best way is to just get my hand in there. I kind of wanted to avoid that step, but hey ho, I'll wash my hands and stuff, but I'm just really giving me a chance to push it all through and randomizing it really nicely. I mean, that would make an amazing burger. <laughs> so I've uh, greased this tin and I'm just gonna press it in there to form our loaves. So that is, <laughs> looks like the tin is spam. It does smell really good though. I'm gonna do a second one and we'll be getting them in the oven in about five minutes. In that goes, I put a little tray underneath here just to catch any potential spillages from the casserole but so far so good. All right folks, the oven timer just went off, uh, so that means our casserole, which did drip a bit. I'm so glad that I put the tray underneath and the meatloafs should be done. We'll get the drink going in a minute. There's only two ingredients, so I'll explain why any moment now. There we go. Woo! Can you see all of the soup where it's bubbled over? I'm so glad I did that. Oh, and they're nice and charred on the top. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Bubbling away like crazy. Oh my gosh, I love this. Ah, that has formed almost like crisps on the top. It's baked them so well, but then you've got that second potato topping, which is gonna be softened, almost like a potato dolphin noise, ham hockey, chicken casserole soupy thing with potatoes. But yeah, look at that. Is it a sign of a good casserole when you get like spillage? Just makes it look more authentic, doesn't it? And the meatloafs, oh please don't be dry. Please don't be dry, they're looking good. All right, so whilst that cools down to one side, we're gonna do something called a frozen hot chocolate. In this vessel that we made our mousse in so long ago, I've got some ice. We've got some instant hot chocolate mix. Now, if you want, you could do a plot twist and add a strawberry milkshake powder or banana powder, something like that instead, but then it wouldn't be frozen hot chocolate. We want to have it as it's ice cold, whizzing up, kind of like a hot chocolate smoothie and chocolate milk. And this is a nostalgic brand for me. I remember having some when I was on holiday in Spain as a teenager, it was kind of like the go-to drink. It's amazing. And I was kind of hoping with you guys, give me some slack with this. Uh, obviously ice cubes is water, which you could freeze in your freezer. So I'm gonna argue that's a free ingredient. So we'll top it with some cream. Let's go. So imagine a hot chocolate with ice in it. And we're gonna break that ice down. Oh, I'm hoping this is gonna be amazing. Oh, wow. Oh. Fairly thick as well, look at that. Nice, and I need to have this as soon as I can so it's still cold. Now, we'll just top up our dessert. Look, that is almost, well, it's not solid as a rock, that would be horrible to eat, but that is really firmed up. We want that moussey texture. And actually, this might demonstrate it as well, let's just see. There we go, it is quite hard there. <laughs> we'll just stick a few pieces of mango in there. Oh yeah. Right, shall we eat? Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> I need to drink it before it gets too warm. 
I love the crispy topping on this. The potatoes, I love that charness. I'm gonna get some real good crunch there. Love the dessert. It does look just like a mousse as well. I'm really excited for that. And the meatloaf, I just tipped it out and it is quite moist already. It sounded squishy, so fingers crossed for that. All right, I need to jiggle this about a little bit, but I'm gonna try the um, frozen hot chocolate first because it's the thing that needs to be the coldest. In fact, I should do it backwards today because this is the second coldest, but I've got the other one in the freezer. Oh, oh my gosh. If you are a chocoholic, you will love this. That is, that feels so like rich. Like proper cocoa town, like really like velvety, like an intense Belgian style chocolate, you know? Sorry. And the fact that it's cold as well. I think it should be a hot chocolate smoothie. That is, ah, oh. I'm gonna drink all of that. I don't want to, I shouldn't, but I'm, that is wonderful. Right, let's see what the meatloaf is like. Oh, oh, it's got a, quite a crust on it, but then it's moist as I cut through. And most importantly, I can still see it's quite warm. It is cooked through. Yeah, it's a lot softer. I was actually worried it might be tough like that all the way through. Let's have a go. Mmm. I think it's all going to vary on the stuffing mix you use. The one I've got was quite onion heavy. That has really laced that through with extra flavour. And I love sage. The breadcrumbs, you can't really get that in there. They just kind of help bond it together with the milk. Mmm. That is just really, really nice. And of course, if you want a splodge of ketchup alongside it, instead of making a glaze to dunk that in, it doesn't need it. But if you want to just give it a little bit more moisture, that's fine. The flavour is in there. That has worked a charm. And you could just make a big one as a main, but I figured I didn't really want to do a meatloaf as a main because it's just kind of like a slab. I like to try and give you something on the plate, whereas hopefully this will. Oh, wow. Can you see it's turned into a sort of... Well, it has turned into a casserole, but it's all bonded together. That heat where it's been bubbling, the soup's been like, hey, potato, hey, ham. Let's just, like, make a thing. So, <laughs> one, of my, one of my most interesting uh, recent descriptions that, but I think this bit alone is going to be nice and crispy. Oh, that is amazing. That is gorgeous. It's all softened. These little cubes of potato are delicate and tender. Just, like, melt in the mouth. There are so many ways you can take this. And we found on the playlist, like, the soup is one of the most versatile things to pad out a recipe. So, 100%. This is wonderful. Like, this is the best day of my life. All right, here we go. Oh, it's got a mousse-like texture. Mmm. Oh, you tropical beast. Wow. It's like a blanket of soothing, creamy, slightly creamy, but then, like, there's a, there's a rough mango -y texture to it running through together that holds it like a purified mango pot of gold. It's insanely good. The condensed milk, that little sweetness of that just running through it, just lifts it slightly, but it's not overpowering. It's not sort of too sickly, which condensed milk, you'd think, oh my gosh. But it's basically just pure sugar. I really love these recipes today. That is a stonker. That's actually got me thinking though. When I had my January break, like I lost like about, not, not a lot of weight. I lost like a 20th of a stone. <laughs> something like minute because I was like not eating all this food that we normally make it's like ah oh, I've got to do my best not to do it now so good what a combo okay so apart from a mildly scorched baking pan today I think this has been a major success and it might throw you but my favorite one out of all of that was the meatloaf the simplicity of that the flavor that we got from it where it looked so bland at first is incredible and I think just a little sauce on that would take it so much up an extra notch but it kind of didn't need it it was moist enough I love everything else that chocolate drink I need to, to like give it to Boston nice one mate uh, so that's it folks hope you enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to give it a like if you did and of course consider subscribing if you're not already for regular food fun do check out the rest of the playlist for lots of free ingredient recipe ideas which you can add more ingredients to put your own personal tweak on it and smash it out the park it is super budget cooking at simplicity at its best this is taking me like 90 minutes this morning and most of it was waiting for those things to bake so give it a go let me know how you get on and i'll see you later bye Right, I've just checked and he is allowed meatloaf, okay? Oh, wow.